Yogi, can you talk about Excuse me. Yeah, how okay. sad you are today, but what fine memories you'll have of Phil for the rest of your life? Well, I have it all the rest of my life. You know, he's, he's my son's uh, godfather. I want to miss him. What was he like, Yogi, as a teammate and as a friend? Oh, a good teammate. Are you kidding? He could play shortstop, boy. And he got in the Hall of Fame, didn't he? And uh, he was one heck of a guy. We were in the business together, Bowling and Ellie. We worked together in American shops. And we always fell around in St. Petersburg. And we had spring training, and the kids were always together. We, we did a lot of things. What about as a broadcaster, Yogi? What will you remember? No, he's pretty good. He always ran across that bridge pretty quick, <laughs> didn't he? <laughs> At the cannolis, too, didn't he? You know, I have one story that I had to tell. You know, when I first joined the Yankees, you know, we had spring training in Havana, and we went to Venezuela. And I went out to the ballpark with him. They let me in, but they wouldn't let him in. The guy, I say, hey, he's a ball player. He said he can't be. <laughs> so we had to wait for the guys, some of the guys that come to tell the guy, hey, he plays with us. And uh, it, it, it was something. He felt a little embarrassed about that. How, how important was it, Yogi, that he ended up making it to the Hall of Fame? Oh, I think it was great. But, well, I tried to get him in. You know, we had, uh, I was on the Veterans Committee. I tried a couple of years to get him in there, and uh, we finally got him in. Yo Yogi, I understand the past months or so you were visiting him on a regular basis yeah. at the home and yeah. playing bingo with him. What was, what was the last month or so like? Phil. Uh, uh, pretty bad the last month, I think. You know, so when he got that, he caught the pneumonia there for a while, and uh, then he got an infection. They, you know, they were feeding him through the stomach, you know, and uh, he caught an infection there and everything. And uh, he was gradually going down a little. And you could tell, you know, we got to visit him like that. But he still, uh, he always remembered me. I come in and, hey, yo, let's go. And, uh, we watch a movie once in a while, then he'll fall asleep. I said, that's the time to go, when he falls asleep. Did and you do a lot of reminiscing together lately? Oh, yeah, we did that. If he's awake, he wasn't awake much of the time. And, uh, but uh, he hung in it pretty good. What was your fondest memory of Phil Rizzuto? Oh, crying. Of all the great ones, what's your fondest memory? What can I say about him? Thank gosh. Great, a lot of good memories with him. I couldn't say it, tell you the truth. Yeah, I like to say when he got in the Hall of Fame, we had fun there. When he made that long speech, he said, if nobody wants to stay here and there. Johnny Bench and I got up and walked off. So. <laughs> Yogi, uh, we, knew, we knew Phil because as a humorous character because of broadcasting. Could you give us an indication of how intense he was in the dugout during games? No, he wasn't intense. He was a cool, cool boy. I think he's the best bunter I ever saw. Uh, he could lay down a bunt and uh, hit and run man. He was very good and uh, did everything good. I used to like when he gets caught in a rundown. Boy, you guys got to throw the ball about 15 times before you tag him out. And you give the guy a chance to go down second base or something like that. Okay, let's give uh, Yoga a break. We'll have Joe here for a couple questions. Joe, can you talk about the legacy that Phil Rizzuto will leave? Well, I was so happy. I know the. I have known Phil for a long time, and uh, never as intimately, obviously, as Yogi. But you know, I, I think you know. I agree with Yogi that that Hall of Fame induction was was pretty special to him. You know, Pee Wee had gotten in, and. Uh, and of course, the, you know everybody was tied together here in New York. You had the outfielders, and of course the shortstops. And um, but he was a kick. And the one memory I have, and he never let me forget it. We were playing in a golf tournament together, and uh, I'm a high handicapper, and he was a pretty good golfer at the time. And they they um, they you know put me from the front tee, so he kept telling me I was hitting from the ladies' tees. He never he never <laughs> forgot that. He may have forgotten a lot of things, but he never forgot that. Uh, but he, uh, he always was upbeat, always was upbeat. And the one thing he used to say when he used to come here, where's Jeter? Where's Jeter? Because, you know, everything was last names, White and Seaver, and, you know, and that's just the way he did his broadcasting. But he, he's, he was a, a very, uh, very special, special man. And I, I remember the last time I saw him here at the stadium, 
and they introduced him, and, and he didn't walk out. He wanted to jog yeah. out, and, and that, that was pretty memorable. Joe, so many players in Yankee history, great players, you're sitting next to one of them. Where does his name fall in there amongst all the greats of the past? Well, you know, it's interesting. Joe DiMaggio was here, and you knew what great player he was, but the, the, the new generation knew him as Mr. Coffee and stuff like that. You know, they never remembered his playing days. And, and Phil, of course, what, 30, 40 years up in the broadcast booth. And, and the fact that he always had cannolis up there to eat during the game and take off across the you know, George Washington Bridge. He and still was eating them before he passed away, too. <laughs> <laughs> um, but it, just the, um, you know, the fact, I think the Hall of Fame meant a lot to him because he just felt that, uh, you know, he was... You know, when you're connected with a championship club, everybody has to contribute to win. And and he was what? He had seven world champ seven world series rings. Uh, and there's no reason that you're a regular player on a team like that, an uh, MVP one year, you certainly have the credentials to be in the Hall of Fame and I think that meant a great deal for him. And as I say, Pee Wee was in there and uh and, and again, you know, Pee Wee's in a number of World Series too, but not, you know, didn't win the World Championships like he did. When you look at a guy that diminutive and realize, you know, how terrific he was, is that like a rarity? Not just then, but well, I guess more so now. Well, more so now. I mean, the, the players, no matter, I don't care what sport you're in, they're all bigger. I mean, I, you know, I remember being an NBA fan, and you, the, the guy under the basket was six foot eight, six foot nine. Then Magic starts dribbling the ball up the court at six eight, six nine. So the, the, I think the players are different. The the, the kids are bigger and uh, and quicker, and, and you know, uh, you know, you don't want to say it, but I mean, like the shortstops of today. When you think about the Jeters and the Tejadas and Alex, and you know, those guys are pretty darn good. You know, these all these shortstops used to hit second and bunt the guy over. You know, the, these guys knock in runs. How about as an Italian kid growing up in Brooklyn, seeing this little guy also Italian? Was he kind of an inspiration for all of your kids? Well, there's no question. You always had a closeness. And, and, and Lasorda likes to say, you know, I don't like you because you, you're Italian. I like you because I'm Italian. And, uh, but you always felt the closeness. And, and the one thing about Phil, you know, the first time you met him, you know, he made you feel like you were a family friend. It was always something that uh, you felt comfortable sitting there. You weren't. He, he didn't try to, you know, make you feel uncomfortable in any way.